What is up, everybody? It is Grand Prix GTP02 here, coming to you once again from the north end of Houston, Texas, where this time the folks at Ram Trucks have given me the keys to something that could definitely allow one to play with the big boys. You see, these keys right here go to that, the 2017 Ram 2500 Power Wagon. So let's get to it. And first things first, before we start talking about this near $62,000 beast that I have sitting here in front of you guys today, I wanna give some of you guys a little bit of a history lesson. Because believe it or not, there is a lot more history and significance to the name this truck wears than most of you probably will imagine. Back at the end of World War II in 1945, Dodge created the first ever mass production 4x4 heavy duty pickup truck using what was then their WC or weapons carrier military use three quarter ton truck platform to create the original Dodge Power Wagon. Now through several variations, the Power Wagon's production ended in 1981 before being discontinued for several years until 2005 when Dodge brought back the Power Wagon name using their 2500 series heavy duty trucks. And as you can see, even even here in 2017, that formula still continues through. Now there is definitely no getting away from the fact that pretty much everything about this 2017 Power Wagon is huge. And I'm not just talking about the fact that it's over 230 some odd inches from nose to tail. I'm talking about things like the price tag, just the starting price of $51,695 is enough to make just about anyone's wallet shiver. However, my particular tester, as I said, dressed in the bright silver metallic clear coat does have a few little extra ads ons on it, bringing the total price tag of my test vehicle to 61,825 smackaroos. Now starting things off with the exterior here, there's one thing that hits me about this truck right off the bat, and that's the fact that it's not all form and looks and no function. Even though this thing looks as aggressive as it does, this truck is built to go anywhere and do anything. But starting here at the front, some of you guys may recognize certain styling elements here just on the front fascia. Things like these gloss black surrounded automatic halogen projector headlights and LED turn signals, as well as this black R RAM corporate grille, and that is because the front fascia and a lot of the other styling cues have been taken directly from the Ram 1500 Rebel. So again, the grille design and the headlights, very much a familiar thing to see. You also have these anodized black solid metal bumpers. Those things are on there. They are not going anywhere. Got fog lights down below, and my particular tester has the extra $5,000 luxury and leather package. Now that, of course, adds a lot of things such as leather seats, navigation, and so on, but it also adds things such as the Park Sense front and rear parking assist system, hence why you see the sensors lining the front bumper here. Now the Power Wagon does have a few exclusive features to it, such as this 12,000 pound worn winch, which comes equipped again as standard equipment. But also if you take a look under here real quick, we also have what Ram call their Articulink suspension setup, which includes, but is not limited to, a locking front and rear differential and also an electronically disconnectable sway bar to allow for better suspension articulation. Now going back to that heritage side of things, one of the ways that this 2017 Power Wagon pays homage to the Power Wagons of old is by this huge stripe here that goes along the bottom of the doors and leads to this vertically stacked Power Wagon namesake here on the bed. According to Ram, I believe that is uh, paying tribute to the later generations of the Power Wagon, the ones from the late 70s and into the early 80s. Um, and one thing to note about that stripe is pretty much every color from red to blue to white 
any of the uh, brighter colors other than black, you will have this stripe painted in the pitch black clear coat. But if you get it in black, you will then get it changed to bright silver instead. Now looking down here at the wheels for a second, these are the standard and only uh, available wheels on the Ram Power Wagon. These are 17 inches in size, finished in the matte black painted surface along with a machine faced rim here. And these come mounted on standard 33 inch off-road ready tires. So it's nice, again, that Ram is not just all for show and no function. They do give you these pretty chunky tires to start with as standard. Now we do have the multi-link suspension set up here in the front and we also have it in the rear. Now originally the Power Wagon was running on leaf springs in the rear. However, Ram have changed that to a multi-link design, uh, I guess for better ride comfort and also for better off-road use. Now, as I was saying, my particular tester is the crew cab. So four full size doors here, but moving along, we also have the metallic black uh, mirror caps. You have LED turn signals uh, embedded in, no blind spot monitoring or anything like that. Even though this truck is as expensive as it is, it is not the more luxury, uh, luxury oriented truck. So no active safety features like that. These are power folding and heated as well. So that's also nice. Uh, my particular tester does have the optional keyless go and uh, push button start as well as the remote start all total I think it's about an extra $500 for both of those options combined uh, normally you'll just have the standard Dodge key fob and just regular keyless entry now moving along to the back bed here, the Ram Power Wagon is available only with a six foot four inch box back here. However, my tester, as you can see, does have the additional $1,300 Ram box cargo management system. And one of the things that I found interesting is that when Ram dropped, the, dropped this truck off, they gave me this little key that goes with it. And I think I finally figured out what it does. It's actually there to lock and unlock the Ram box cargo management system and also lock things like the tailgate. So in case anybody was wondering why this thing has a keyhole on it, even though when you unlock and lock the truck, it will lock these things and unlock these things for you. It's cool to know that you have an extra little system like that. Now coming around to the back of the Power Wagon, we have these full LED taillights here. You of course have the Power Wagon uh, namesake here with these big RAM logos here. And one cool thing is that my particular tester has two separate backup cameras. We have one here lo uh, located right next to the tailgate hitch or the uh, tailgate uh, latch. But moving up towards the top of the cab, we actually have for an extra 550 bucks, the LED uh, stoplight up there on top, which also includes a cargo cam. So it looks down over the back bed here to make sure your cargo has not shifted. And also speaking of the back bed, we have the optional tri-fold tonneau cover. That is an option that is not standard. I kind, I kind of wish it was since this truck um, can be used for uh, a pretty decent pay uh, payload, but it's nice that they include that even in the options list. Now, as we finish off with the exterior here, I am just so glad that I finally got the chance to drive one of these big heavy duty Ram trucks. I've always loved the 1500s, but I've always wondered what it's been like to drive one of these huge three quarter ton or one ton 2500 or 3500 series pickup trucks. And now that I finally have, I'm glad I drove this one because this thing is just badass from head to toe, top to bottom, and potentially inside and out. Is that the truth? Well, let's open it up and find out. Now getting onto the Power Wagon's interior, with my particular tester being equipped as such, it's kind of a mix between a more luxury oriented truck and a true work truck. And why I say that is because they've deleted the floor mats in this particular one, so you've got this heavy duty black vinyl floor here. So again, that is more uh, the aesthetic of a work truck. However, you do have the perforated, heated, and ventilated leather seats here, thanks to the luxury and leather group. You do have the Power Wagon embroidery on 
on the uh, inner bolsters, as well as the nice little Ram logo up there on the headrest. The driver's seat here does have two-person memory adjustments, as well as power lumbar, and your usual power adjustment controls, distance of recline, and such. But also, one area that it's like a work truck are in other aesthetics, such as here on the door. Uh, you have this sort of heavy grade uh, vinyl-like material here on the upper part. It does give a little bit, but it has kind of a rough feel to it. Uh, you have this metallic gray painted surface here, as well as a little bit of more rubbery-like material here, uh, more towards the armrest. Same thing with the armrest itself and things like the door pole. You do have your typical electronic switch gear here, though. You do have your power mirrors, which, as I said, they are power folding at the touch of a button as well as things such as your dual automatic front windows for the driver and passenger, the rest of your power windows, the window locks, the keyless access with the remote start, as I said, is an optional extra on this truck on the exterior, uh, but you also have your standard power door locks here on the interior as well. Now, settling into the Power Wagon's driver's seat, for starters, just like the exterior, you are reminded inside here that you are in charge of something absolutely huge. For starters, just getting up and in, you have 14.3 inches of ground clearance down there, and as you can see, no additional side steps, which I kind of wish this truck had. It would be nice for, say, someone a little bit shorter, but even someone at an even six foot tall, uh, such as myself, do, uh, does have to take a little bit of a running start or take a rather significant step up uh, to actually heave themselves into this driver's seat here. But as far as things like vis uh, visibility out the front, it's excellent. You do have that monstrous hood bulge to look out uh, over as well. Pretty decent uh, visibility here out of the side windows, but out the back, it is sort of moderate. You do have the big bed back there and the rear window on this truck is rather slim. Uh, but then again, you do have those two cameras, which I'll show you here how they work in just a bit um, that allow you to see a little bit better out the back of the truck. Now, as you can probably guess, with it being a bright sunny day, it is a scorcher here in Houston. So let's get that air conditioning going. We've got the standard Dodge key fob here. Uh, again, this keyless access, I'll say it again, is an option. Uh, normally you would have just the regular Ram key fob, uh, but this one has the lock, unlock, uh, remote start, and the panic with the retractable key blade, but you also have the little spare key that you could also use to unlock the doors. But being that it's a smart key system, it works like all the others. Just have the key in the vehicle, foot on the brake, hit the button on the dashboard, and and Alrighty, so we got our aircon going full blast. We got our butts cooling off thanks to those ventilated seats here. So let's talk about this interior. Now at $62,000, there is quite a lot to talk about in here, but at the same time, a lot of the stuff you're going to be seeing here in front of the driver and in terms of the center console and stuff is all pretty typical modern day Ram stuff in terms of its styling. So. For starters, right here in front of the driver, we have a three-spoke multifunction leather trim steering wheel with a nice perforated piece of leather here going across the top and the steel gray X-pattern stitching here going around the interior rim. It's adorned with all your typical things, your voice recognition and Bluetooth, the controls for your seven inch thin film transistor display, which I'm not sure how well you're able to see with a little bit of the glare there, uh, but that is standard on the Power Wagon, this seven inch TFT display up there. Um, and those are your controls for that. And also your standard cruise control as well. Now going really quickly to that thin film transistor display, you can go up and down, change things like active fuel economy, your trip meter, uh, your trailer brake connection, which I'll talk more about here in a bit, Bluetooth audio, service messages, you can do different settings, your digital speedometer, and it goes on and on. And you can even scroll left and right, see things like your tire pressure and so on. So there is quite a lot to go through in there and it's pretty easy to use. Now, as far as the gauge cluster is, con is uh, concerned, it is more like that of the luxury line of the Ram trucks nowadays. You even have the little Power Wagon logo integrated up there in the top of the gauges, but you have your tachometer, your water temperature, battery, you have your uh, oil pressure or oil temperature, uh, you have your fuel gauge and speedometer, and I love the font on it. It's almost like that out of the Viper, but I know that's kind of a horrid comparison, but it's kind of neat how it has that sort of aggressive uh, font to the gauge cluster here. Now the steering column itself is manually tilting and uh, telescoping. You just have the little trigger for that down there. And moving over to the side of the steering column for a second, as I said, you have the automatic halogen projector headlights, you have fog lights, you have your rear cargo bed lights, as I showed you earlier, and also your instrumentation dimming off to the side as well. 
Now moving over here to the center console, uh, some of the things here do seem a little bit dated and I'm specifically pointing out the 8.4 inch Uconnect touchscreen. It's pretty much the same as all of the other Ram and Dodge and Chrysler Jeep products out there. Unfortunately though, this one has not been updated with things like Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, things like that, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. I mean, a 60 some odd thousand dollar truck doesn't have uh, some of the modern conveniences that a uh, $30,000 Chrysler vehicle or Ram product may have. Um, and the same goes with the map. The graphics are a little bit out there. They're a little bit dated. And one big complaint that I have as I put the truck in reverse here is the backup camera. The resolution's okay, uh, but it's still kind of fuzzy. It's like looking through kind of an old school TV, uh, if I'm honest. Now, right now, we're looking out the back tailgate. However, if I switch it over, as I said, we have the cargo cam. So now we're looking at the entire back bed and this you can actually use, like I said, while you're driving. So uh, if you have cargo back there, you can see if it's possibly shifted around or something like that. Um, but it's kind of neat how you have those two different cameras back there. Um, now, this particular tester of mine does have the nine speaker Alpine premium audio systems. I'm sure you can see by the Alpine logo up there on the dash. And let me just say, this truck has quite a lot of sound to it. So we'll just turn on the radio, and give you a sound demo. Infinite power. So as I was saying, that Alpine system definitely does pack a punch, and on some of the more bassy songs that I've listened to in this truck, it can definitely rattle even the driver's seat here. It is ridiculous the amount of bass that that factory subwoofer puts out. But as you can see, I have Bluetooth media streaming here, USB and auxiliary inputs, which are located here in the center console, as well as a 12 volt direct current outlet here. Um, but moving back to this touchscreen for a second, the response is okay. It takes a second for it to actually remember what you're touching here. Uh, you have your controls for the heated steering wheel, which is also part of the luxury and leather group. Um, the two backup cameras, the automatic uh, auto rear, uh, auto dimming rear view mirror, um, as well as different other settings and things like that. Um, you have your Uconnect applications and that deals with your climate controls and so on. Uh, factory navigation, I was just showing you, Sirius XM travel link, and of course your phone pairing as well. Now, straying away from this side of the center, uh, center console for a second, I wanna focus on these controls right here. Like I was saying, this truck is built for function. So these are your controls for your uh, axle unlock. You can lock the front and rear diff or just the rear differential. And you also have the button that can electronically disconnect uh, the front sway bar uh, for greater front suspension articulation when going off road. But going back here to the center stack, you of course have your volume and tuning buttons. So I'm glad that they don't have any uh, just, you know, basic uh, touchscreen functions here. Um, but you do have a dual zone automated climate control setup. So you do have the air conditioning recycling, both your temperature functions, fan speed here in the middle, front and rear defrost, and also introducing the AC. Um, and you can also do that if you go through the app system, you can go straight to the climate function here. Uh, so that allows you to do it via touchscreen um, instead of using the buttons uh, down here. Now moving below that, you have your trailer brake uh, control right here, as well as hill descent control, traction control, your tow haul mode, the buttons to turn off your front and rear parking assist, as well as all of your functions for the heated steering wheel and both sides of your heated and ventilated seats. Moving on over really quickly to the far side, you do also have a standard household style outlet, uh, 115 volt, 150 watts. So plenty of capabilities with that plug. And you also have a nice little USB plug down here that is active. So you actually can charge your phone while the truck is off. So if for say you're in an event, you leave your phone in the truck or whatever, which I don't know why you would, um, but you leave it in here, you can actually leave it charging even while the truck is off. Now, moving down to the center real quick, you of course have your typical cubbies, bigger cup holders here, even though there's three right here in this uh, foldable center console. And you also have the lever for your uh, four wheel drive. This is not four wheel drive on the fly. Uh, you have to be stopped when you actually use this, as I found out. Uh, you have your two different modes of four wheel drive, two wheel drive, and neutral, respectively. 
And last thing to note here in the front seats is that these are 40-20-40 split fold seats. This entire seat is a bench and that comes as standard whether you have the standard cloth interior or the leather like I have it here. So you can fold this up, you can go three people across, or you even have extra little bits of storage here underneath. So that is rather neat that you have all this additional storage here. And as I said before, you do have the little storage compartment here bound in the nice sort of hardcore vinyl like material with a bit more plush uh, plushness to it than it does have on the door moving up here to the roof super fast as i said we do have the auto dimming uh rear view mirror the controls for which are uh, down there in the center console we do have the garage door opener we have a power tilting and sliding uh rear window so you just push the button and as you can see opens and closes with relative ease and we also have some LED map lights up here. There is no sunroof as far as I'm concerned on the uh, options list for the power wagon. Um, so for 62 grand, I wasn't expecting a sunroof. This truck is more about off-road prowess uh, than luxury. So uh, if you want a sunroof, I'd suggest going for one of the more luxury oriented versions of the 2500. Now moving on to the Power Wagon's rear compartment, like I said, my tester here is the full-size crew cab configuration. So we have a full-size set of rear doors as well as the ones in the front, uh, which does open up to a pretty sizable rear compartment here. Uh, it's not the biggest of the uh, full-size trucks or the three-quarter ton trucks that I've ever been in. However, it is sizable nonetheless. We do have nice little floor storage compartments. These can be used for everything from drink storage to little miscellaneous items and stuff like that. Um, and if you do decide to put drinks in here, you actually can remove it which means you can take it inside wash it off whatever and uh, clean it out for the next use which is pretty nice now to prove my point that you do have to step up and in a good bit again i'm six one and i have to grab these handles here to just heave my 190 pound self up here into the back seat but here in the back seat i have the driver's seat exactly where i would want it um, and i can fit my hand pretty much between my knee and the back of the seat there which is nice uh, you do have two leather bound map pockets on either side uh, these are 60 40 split fold seats and as you can see we do have little lights back there as well which is kind of nice to have as well as the fold out uh, storage tray kind of area here uh, so you just simply fold up the seat this uh, uh, unfolds from the bottom of it and you actually can store quite a lot of things as you can see I have my one-tenth scale RC car box uh, sitting here just for uh, demonstration purposes um, you do have the little armrest here in the back with a couple of cup holders as well but I can't exactly show you that because the seat is up uh, but nevertheless it's there if you need it Now moving on to the Power Wagon's cargo and back bed area, the first thing we want to talk about is the Ram Box cargo management system. Like I said, these lock and unlock when you lock and unlock the trunk, or you can do it manually via the keyhole. There's one on each side of the back bed, which does decrease uh, the amount that you can actually store in the back bed itself. Uh, but these cargo areas, I do have a friend of mine who has one of these as a tradesman, uh, but it has the Ram Box uh, cargo management, and he's able to fit a couple of shotguns in here, his ammunition and everything else so that is uh, a bit of a nicety having uh, these little storage boxes here on the side but like I said it does de uh, decrease the amount of stuff that you can put here in the back so we'll open the tailgate here it is not easy lift and lower so it is a little bit on the heavy side we do have the optional spray in bed liner on this one which is a nicety to have the uh, ram box cargo management doesn't just include those side boxes there it also includes a bed divider here as well as led bed lighting now like i was saying for an extra 550 bucks we do have the tri-fold uh, tonneau cover here the latches for which i'm not sure how well you can see are just right here so you just pull those down and then it just simply folds all the way back on its own now i would do that but unfortunately i can't do it one-handed so you'll just have to use your imagination on that one now coming up here to the business end of the power wagon to those who were expecting to find the legendary cummins turbo diesel six-cylinder engine unfortunately you're going to be a little bit disappointed however hope is not all lost with this truck because under here is still a best in class power plant for this three quarter ton pickup truck. It's a 6.4 liter overhead valve Hemi V8 that's still good for 410 horsepower and 429 foot pounds of torque. Now the EPA does not rate these trucks for fuel economy. However, during my week of testing, I've averaged anywhere from between 12 and a half to 14 miles per gallon in mostly city driving. So if you want a truck with good fuel economy, this probably isn't it. However, the numbers don't stop there. 
Although it's not as good as the turbo diesel models, this truck is still good enough for a payload somewhere around, I think it's 1,700 to 1,900 pounds and a towing capacity just shy of 9,800 pounds. Now, like I said, it's not as good as the diesel, but it's still very adequate for the size engine and truck that it is. Now with as big and badass as the power wagon actually looks and feels, I can probably imagine that there's a good few of you that would think that this truck has a good bit of safety in mind. However, those looking for active safety features in a big truck like this, you're going to want to look elsewhere because unfortunately there are none to be had. No active crews, no blind spot monitoring, no anything like that. But then again, I really wouldn't expect that on a big truck like this. If it were more a, lux uh, a luxury oriented truck, uh, I would definitely say so, but this one is not so much meant for luxury despite the leather seats and all of the options and stuff like that. Now I'm not even going to attempt to get back into this thing because it is really tall, uh, but you do have your usual array of airbags. You have your front impact, side impact, and side curtain airbags, just to name a few things, and also things like the glove box. You do have a split fold storage area here with this little upper cubby hole here, and then also you have the main glove box down below for all of your books and everything. It is damped, so it does fall nice and easily, uh, but it is not lined in felt. Again, a nod towards the rough and rugged nature that this truck actually has. Also here on the passenger seat, uh, we do have power adjustments as well uh, with the power lumbar support to go along with it. And unfortunately on that note everybody, our time here with the 2017 Ram 2500 Power Wagon has now unfortunately drawn to a close. I do hope you guys have enjoyed this review as much as I have had fun making it for y'all. Now if you guys like what you see, please do give this video a thumbs up and also be sure to click that subscribe button down below for many more videos like this and more to come in the future. But in the end, a huge thanks goes out to the boys and girls at Ram Trucks for providing me with this absolute behemoth for an entire week of testing and driving. But in the end, guys, from the north end of Houston, Texas, this has been Grand Prix GTP 02, and I'll see y'all next time. Take care, everybody. Stay safe.